This is part 56 of ASP.NET Core tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss how to handle and process the posted edit view. So in short, we want to implement edit action that responds to HTTP post. This is continuation to our previous video, part 55. So please watch part 55 before proceeding. At the moment, we are on the list view of our application. When we click edit button, on any of the employees, we are redirected to slash home slash edit slash the ID of the employee whose details we are editing after we change the employee details and then issue the post request by clicking this update button. Notice we see 404 error. That's because at the moment within our home controller, we don't have the edit action that knows how to handle this HTTP post request. Our natural next step is to add an edit action that can handle the post request. At the moment, within our home controller, we already have an edit action that can handle HTTP GET request. We need another edit action that can handle HTTP POST request. It's going to be somewhat similar to this HTTP POST CREATE action. So let's make a copy of this and then change the bits that are required. I'm going to paste this just below our HTTP GET edit action. First, we want to change the name of the method here from create to edit. Next, it's going to receive employee edit view model as the parameter. Remember, we implemented employee edit view model class in our previous video. Now, when we submit this edit form and issue a post request by clicking the update button, the data on this form is automatically mapped to the corresponding properties on employee edit view model class. So we want to change the parameter type here from employee create view model to employee edit view model. If the model state is valid, meaning there are no validation errors, that's when we want to process this posted edit form. If there are any validation errors, then we want to re-render this edit view so the user can fix any validation errors and then submit the form again for processing. If the model state is valid, we want to retrieve the existing details of the employee from the database. For that, first let's create a variable of type employee. Let's call the variable employee to retrieve the existing employee details we are going to use the injected employee repository on that we have get employee method to this method we need to pass the id of the employee whose details we want to retrieve and we can get the id of the employee from this incoming model object on the model object we have id property at this point you might be wondering on this edit form we do not have a field for employee id so from where is the id property on the model object is getting the employee id value well if you recollect in our previous video on the edit view we included this hidden input field for the id property so when we are editing an existing employee details his id is stored in this hidden input field now when we issue a post request by clicking the update button the id from this hidden input field is mapped to the id property on this incoming model object so that's how we have the id available so once we have retrieved the existing employee details from the database we want to update the properties on this employee object with the data that we have on this incoming model object so employee.name equals model.name similarly employee.email equals model.email and finally, employee.department equals model.department. Next, we need to process the uploaded employee photo. These lines of code that process the image are going to be common between create and this edit action method. To reduce code duplication, let's extract these lines of code into a separate private method and then call that method both in the create action and in this edit action method. To extract a method, select the lines that you want to extract into a separate method right click and then select this option quick actions and refactorings we have the option to extract a method click on that and then we have to provide a meaningful name for the method i'm going to call this method process uploaded file notice we have the method with the provided name created it returns a string which is the unique file name and it is stored in this variable. Now let's go to the definition of this method. 
To reduce code duplication, we want to call this private method from our create action as well. So instead of all these lines of code, we can call our private method and then pass it the model object. Notice we have a red squiggly. When I hover the mouse over, it says cannot convert from employee create view model to employee edit view model. Now, if you look at the model object of this create action method, it is of type employee create view model. Now, when I hover the mouse over this process upload file method, it expects an object of type employee edit view model. And the error message says it cannot convert the employee create view model to employee edit view model. Now, if you look at our employee edit view model and employee create view model classes, they have inheritance relationship. Employee edit view model inherits from employee create view model. So to fix this error, all we need to do is go to the definition of process upload file method and then change the parameter type here from employee edit view model to employee create view model. Since we have specified the parent type here, we can either pass an instance of employee create view model or employee edit view model. If we take a look at our create action method, notice we are passing it an instance of employee create view model. And if we take a look at our edit action method, we are passing it an instance of employee edit view model. We want to update the existing employee photo only if a new photo is provided using the file upload control. If a new photo is not provided, then we want to keep the existing photo. Now the obvious question is, how do we determine if the user has provided a new photo? Well, we could use photo property of this incoming employee edit view model object for that. Now, if we select a new file and issue a post request by clicking the update button, the photo property on the employee edit view model object is going to receive the uploaded file. That's because if you take a look at our edit view, notice the file upload input element is bound to the photo property of our employee edit view model object. So to determine if the user has uploaded a new photo, all we need to do is check if the photo property on the model object is not null. If the photo property on the model object is not null, that means the user has uploaded a new photo and we want to update that as well. This process uploaded file method saves the uploaded file to the images folder in WW root folder and returns us the unique file name. We want to store that unique file name in the photopath property of the employee object. So employee.photopath equals the returned unique file name. At this point, we have updated all the properties of this employee object with the data that we have on this edit form. Notice we have updated name, email, and department properties on the employee object with the data that we have in this incoming model object. If the user has uploaded a new photo, we also have updated the photo path property with that new photo unique file name. Now we need to pass this employee object to the update method on our employee repository. Through Entity Framework, this update method is going to update the respective employee record in the underlying employees database table with the data that we have in this employee object. So let's pass this employee object as a parameter to this update method. We are updating an existing employee details here, so there is no need to create this new employee object. After the employee record is updated, let's redirect the user to the index action. We need to do one more thing. If a new photo is provided, before we save that new provided photo, we want to check if the employee has got an existing photo. If he does, we need to delete that existing photo. So if we take a look at our edit view, notice we are using a hidden input field to store the employee's existing photo path. So when this form is submitted, the model on our edit action is going to receive that existing photo path property value from the hidden field. So to check if the user has got an existing photo, all we need to do is check the existing photo path property on the model object. If the existing photo path property is not equal to null, that means the user has got an existing photo and we need to delete that. 
To be able to delete the employee's existing photo, we want its complete physical path. This existing photo path property only provides us the file name. We know all these photos are present in the images folder, which in turn is present in this www root folder. To get the physical path of this www root folder, we are going to use this injected iHosting environment service. This web root path property provides us the physical path to this www root folder. From there, we want to get to the images folder. And in the images folder, we want to look for the file. To get the full file name, we use the existing photo path property of the model object. We want to combine all these paths. So let's use path.combine method. As you can see from the IntelliSense, this method combines the three strings that we have provided as arguments to get the complete physical path to the existing photo. Let's store that in a variable of type string. I'm going to call the variable file path. To delete the file, we are going to use the file class present in system.io namespace. This class has got delete method and to this method, we need to provide the path of the file that we want to delete. At the moment, we are on the list view. Now let's edit this employee, Sarah Details. Notice her ID is 1012. Let's change her name from Sarah to Sarah1, her email to Sarah1 at presumetech.com, and let's change her department to ID. For now, let's not change the photo. Let's click the update button. We are redirected to the index view. Notice her name is updated. Let's navigate to the details view. Notice all the details, email and department are also updated. Her ID is still 1012. Let's view her record in the database table. Notice even in the database table, we have name, email and department updated as expected. Her photo is still sarah.png. Now let's update all the details, including the photo. Let's change the name back to Sarah. Email also to Sarah at presumetech.com and change the department from I2 to HR and then upload a new photo. Let's select Freya.png, click the update button. Let's navigate to the details view. Notice we have all the details, name, photo, email and department updated as expected. Next, let's also confirm this is the data that we have in the underlying employees table. Notice all the columns of the Sarah record are updated as expected, including this photo path column. At the moment, our application has a small issue. When we create a new employee and then immediately update that employee's existing photo with a new photo, our application crashes. Let's look at that in action. Let's create a new employee. There we go. We have our new employee, Freya created. Now let's update her existing photo with a new photo. Let's select david.png. Click update. There we go. The page crashes. Look at the error message. The process cannot access the file freya.png because it's being used by another process. And that's exactly the problem here. We are trying to delete that file freya.png, but another process is holding on to it. Why is that? That's because if you take a look at our process uploaded file method, this is the method that copies the employee's photo to images folder inside WW root folder. And here we are creating a file stream to do that. But this file stream is not properly disposed. And that's why we have that error. To properly dispose this file stream, let's wrap it with a using statement. Create a variable. Let's name it file stream. And then assign this line that creates a new file stream to this variable. Let's move this line of code inside this using block. And then this copy to method requires the file stream to copy the image into the images folder. And we have that file stream here. 
Here is the important bit to understand. Since now we have wrapped the file stream with the using block, as soon as this block completes execution, this file stream is properly disposed and we should not have this error anymore. Let's navigate to the index view. Create a new employee. Let's select david.png as the photo. Create. Employee created. Let's edit and change his existing photo. Let's select sarah.png. Update. There we go. Employee photo is updated as expected. Here is the HTTP POST edit action method and on this slide we have process uploaded file private method. That's it in this video. Thank you for listening.